So what I'm going to be needing to do is firstly, I'm going to need to undo this undo this bolt there, just so I can get this chain cover off. But I'm going to just lift it up slightly, so that at least that way it's not in the way. And after that, I've got to loosen that nut up and that nut up first, so then the wheel can go forward. Then it will bring this thing forward more, so that it, it makes the chain more loose. Then I can do the nut, I can do the nut there, undo that, push that all the way through. Hopefully I shouldn't need to take the actual brake, shouldn't need to take the brake caliper off. You should just basically slide out. So that's the theory side of it. I'll show you when it's off. So as you can see, I've undone this. I've put the bolt, the bolt back in so that I don't lose it. I've almost taken a spindle out. I've undone that nut to the end of the adjuster. Same with this side. And I've undone the nut which is there and the actual adjustment there which goes on to there so now this is all movable and I'll be taking it out and I'll be taking it out now and there we go the rear wheel is there all I've done is basically whatever came out from either side of the wheel all I've done is I've put it back on the actual spindle bolt what I call it and now all I'm about to do is take this bit off to get to the actual bearings behind it. Got the actual spacer there with one bearing there, but that feels fine. Put that back in. Let's just take the actual that thing off. All right, all nice greased up, just how it should be. So let's put this to one side. Put all these little rubber spaces back into these gaps. There we go. <laughs> doing, it, doing it wrong myself. And as to be expected, this spacer has come out, as to be expected, and that lives. Remember, it's come out, it sits on top of it like that, so all the dirt and grease bit goes there, so the shiny bit will live right on there right well it looks like um, that is possibly the actual sprocket bearing on the rear that is actually um, loose well it is loose enough and the actual bearings in the actual rear wheel, um, there is next to no movement at all. So um, this is what I've found. So what the spindle, the bulk spindle, in, in the actual wheel. And so far, I've grabbed both sides. I can feel I can't feel any from one side but I can feel a bit I can feel a bit from, from the other so I will have to replace it because there shouldn't be anything so I can feel a bit on this side Coming 
from the actual coming from the actual sprocket itself, the actual bearing. Um, put it through there. This bit is actually moving a bit. All we're about to see on this side. Trying to keep it as uh, solid as possible. So the bearing in there is going to need re going to need replacing. Right. So what I've done basically is with the actual sprocket bearing, it was literally stuck in that hole. Can't really see it because we're dark. So the sprocket was right, was right in that hole. I'll flip it over. Oh, I feel the heat coming off that. So it was stuck in this hole, and that, as you can see, it's really bone dry. So when I put the new one in, I'm going to grease it all up, as well as as well as put grease on the actual bearing itself. But to actually get anything out, any bearings. To actually get the bearing out, I had to literally, obviously when you, if you go to do this, if you do go to do this, make sure that whoever's home it is, whether your partner's, your wife's, or anyone's house you're at, just make sure that they're happy with you, that they're okay with you putting this type of thing, the sprocket, on top of the actual hooker if you don't have a big enough um, blowtorch because the blowtorch I managed to get as you saw was literally like a pen and that wasn't producing enough heat for what I needed so as long as your partner or wherever you are is happy with you putting it on, putting it on the actual hooker then everything's cool just make sure you don't make a complete mess in the kitchen, otherwise you will get it. So now, whilst because I've done because I've done this and it's still quite hot, I'm going to leave it to cool down. I don't need to heat it up anymore. I don't need to heat it up anymore to get the other one in. I can use the old one as like a as like a bush thing to like push push the new one in. So grease it up and everything. The next the next one I've got to do now is my wheel which is outside I've got to put possibly try to get that on the actual cooker itself to actually heat it up so that I can knock that one out knock, knock the bearing out as well so hopefully we'll see we'll, we'll see that happen in, in a minute huh. right I've now got the wheel and this is what I've done so far it's not um, well I wouldn't advise it to a lot of people but I do not have a big enough blowtorch so this is basically the next best thing uh, I'm not going to keep it on there for long I've literally put it on I've literally had it on there for about a minute so I'm going to leave it for maybe like a minute more so that I can um, then take it off and hopefully knock the other bearing out. I don't want to leave it on there for too long because otherwise I don't fancy the tire. Um, it's not. Just make sure that you are with it for the for the period of time. And I'm going to be taking it off in a minute with the with the wheel heat up slightly but more. I was able to um, drive out the bearing out of this hole and the bearing a bit difficult to get to is there I can't touch it because it's going to be hot 
but what I did was I used the end of it, the end of the uh, sprocket ratchet att attachment, the extender, to actually put on the edge and then whacked the end with a hammer. <coughs> Just uh, doing it like across, like a cross type uh, motion. So like up top, below, left, right. So I like, keep repeating the process kind of thing. So that it draws it all out. And um, now that's out, I'm gonna, in a minute, give give all of this a give the insides a clean up and I'll be greasing it up so as in uh, when I put the new ones in I just need to all I will need to do is tap it in instead of giving it a right wallop basically so I'll, I'd have to, what I will probably do is put this side in first, give it a good, give it a clean up, grease up, put that, put that bearing in first, and then, then put this spacer in the middle, and then on the other side, put the other bearing inside by tapping it, by tapping it in. I'm probably going to use the other. The other old bearing to drive it in. Well, I haven't given it a clean up just yet, but I've got a wire brush for it. But I'll try and get all round the inner bit. So that there's no dirt or crud, or crud around it for the new bearings. So we're just going to do this for this side and for the other side, and then hopefully get on and put the new bearings in. I've just flipped over to give the other side a clean up. It's not looking too bad. All I've got to do really now is to put some copper grease inside of it so that the bearing will actually go in with a bit, with a bit more ease. So all I've done is placed it on top, so it's going to be a slight, a slight snug fit, but all I'm going to do is use an old bearing to put on top of it. And just bash each, just knock each corner until I until I can drive it, until I can drive the bearing in. Right. So what I've currently done is because where it's so cold, like the metal's cold itself, so it's sort of shrunk itself. Whereas beforehand, I managed to heat it out to get the old bearing out. So what I've had to do is heat it up slightly, but it's. I can feel the warmth from it, but so far um, I'm hoping that with a little bit of heat expanding that it will um, I can draw the bearing in better. Try to tap it in, it's possible at the moment. 
ちの駒引きましたIt is going through. So now, what I'm going to do is put this one on top, and then I'll be able to use this to drive it um, the rest the, the, the rest of the way through. Because it, it only needs to be like pretty much a couple of mil. Um, you just need to see a couple of mil from the actual surface bit. So now, use we'll use a twenty mil socket to put on that ring there, just so because I won't be able to keep it still. So have that there, and it gives me a bit of leverage. That way, we'll try it anyway. Yeah, it's working. Just need it to go down slightly more. And then I should be able to hear a difference. That's almost down. bashing the old, the old one in and I believe that is it that is in so 
So how it looks now. With a little bit of heating up to expand it, expand the metal, the bearing is now pretty much, I was after a little bit of a lip there. So then that will sit, hopefully that should, that should sit as it should be. Check out the other side. And that looked pretty much as it should do. I won't, um, so as far as I can tell, that is right to the edge and how it should be. Right, so now that's, now that's in, what we'll do now is flip it over and put the spacer which was in between which was in between the two bearings so this is the actual spacer all this does from what I've from what I've seen um, as I took it apart basically just sits in the middle but it's the two bearings aren't pressing onto it you have a slight bit of movement so as, as the bearing is on it it's sitting next to it but it's not pressured it's just it just sits there it, it, it has a certain amount of movement but it's not so movable that it just moves about in there so let's place that on top Pretty much like this. So just place it pretty much best as possible in the centre. Then all I've got to do again is grease up all around the all around the edge and on and on the bearing itself. And um, most probably um, get it placed on there, compressed on it. And then probably heat it up again just to put it on right so I've I heated it up one more time and now I have um, given it a couple of wax using using this just to get it just to get it in the center and it's now managed to have the piece right where I, I'm after it so if you can see that piece of metal there don't know if you can that piece there that is now in in the right in the right position. You you don't want it flat against it. You still want it to have movement, 
but you want it to be just in the space. I've seen other people do it on, the, on their wheels, but it's it, but they have um, much bigger actual rims. That's why I've done it slightly different. So after that, the next bit will be the sprocket bearing. So that will be the that will be the next the next bit. So now all we've got to do is to uh, we've I've previously done given it a bit of a clean up and on the inside I've managed to get this bearing out by heating the by heating this piece up so then I could get an extension of a bar and using my a rubber mallet I'd rather use a rubber mallet than use actual hammer because I can you can easily dent metal obviously with a hammer normal hammer so using a rubber one I basically knocked it knocked it out the the bearing out and that's basically the result of it not looking too great or healthy and um, go from this to this one all brand new and all I've got to do now is to pretty much replace it and knock it in knock it back into the actual sprocket one so firstly all I've got to do is to like I did with the other ones grease round the bearing up and then put some grease inside it and then basically use my um, extension from my socket and wrench set to do it because I don't think I'll have enough leverage to knock it in knock the bearing in either, either ways hopefully I won't need to use any heat on it get not lots but enough and first I'm going to first want to put enough round the bearing holder or this sprocket <coughs> so is that there's enough for it to just ease just to ease it in more better Once that is all greased up, then get a little bit more just to grease up the actual bearing itself. If anyone believes I am doing it wrong, then please let me know. Because I've tried seeing, trying to do a little bit of YouTube research myself, and I haven't really found any videos on it so I'm not a professional but I say I like to do it yourself only way to learn so that's all greased up all nicely greased up now hopefully it won't take too long to knock it in if I do need to if it does get stuck then I will use heat to push it in so at the moment it's level enough gonna use the old one to put on top of it just to lightly knock it in. Don't want to 
give it a right wallop. But yet managing to actually push it in as much as possible. So from eye level, very much probably about half or just over half has gone in. So from eye level, very much probably about half has gone in. It's almost enough. You see it like that. It's like Just so I don't need to, just so I don't end up giving it an almighty wallop, I'm gonna put, put a bit of heat on it so then that way it will even better. So, I'm gonna use the cooker again to make sure that um, whoever else uses the cooker in the house is fine with you was he putting a bike part on top of the cooker just to make sure there's no dirt or grease that goes on the on the actual um, cooker I've got two small two small blocks of wood um, get them anywhere these are as far as I know old um, <laughs> table legs Now all, all I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm not going to use a big hob or anything like that, I'm just going to use a small one so that all I want to do is heat up the centre bit so then that way it will, it will ease in more better. So line it up and then we turn the heat on. I want it full blast, just enough for it. Just enough for it to keep happening. Oh, just this point. Once you get it on further, you get that minute. Um, so you submit or you don't break down. So we'll go all back. We'll go all back. Don't use the the pops. Do something like that. So one of the things I'm getting would be to have a decent torch so you don't have to use the cooker. Give it a few more seconds, then I will take it off. Thank you. 
this one will be going on top of there and the smaller one will be going round the actual wheel itself but for, but for now all I'll be doing is once it's cooled down enough so I don't want this to melt I'm going to leave it to cool down and then really with this you should be able to just push it in you shouldn't need to hammer it or anything but until then I'm going to leave it to cool down and do that afterwards where the, the sprocket now the sprocket bearing and sprocket have cooled right down now so it's it's warm but it's not burning hot or anything like that. So so with this thing the um oh, I don't really know what it's called but it's um it's like a bearing seal, I believe it is. Hopefully I won't need to use hopefully I won't need to use the hammer on it. So all I'll do is just lightly press it in. I'm using thumbs. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So is that just need to press it in? Hopefully, that's probably the best it's going to be. It's got its own thickness. Yep. So for now, that is that is what it's going to be like. And the next thing will be to put the sprocket on the wheel and put the wheel back on the bike. So for now, we we'll do that in a moment. We're going to go and put the put the sprocket part onto the wheel itself but before I do that I just want to give the adjustments a clean up because they're not looking too great and um, just want them working in good proper order so which shouldn't take too long do that for this side and the other side and hopefully you'll be looking a lot better so at this point clean up re-grease up put them back in and then we'll get straight on to putting the wheel back in
cosas muy bien. La guía tuya, tu cosa. New grease stuff and everything tidy up as best as possible. Right, let's just make sure. Right, okay. So I'm gonna make sure that the lip of that bit for the other for this side is on the outside. So where the lip is there, I'm gonna put that on this side. New greased up sides in and out as it should do. And I'll just do the exact same to the right, other side. So the next bit to do is to put the rubber bits, these rubber pieces, into the spaces provided. And they don't go in anyway because you've got a little guide hole there, which this piece will go into. So, shove that in. Then just before I put it on, I've got to put a little spacer into here, which is this thing. A little spacer with a collar, which will which will go against this piece. So that with a little bit of grease, slide in like that. And now to put this on top of this. <coughs> 